As you can see, yeah, I slept really well last night. <laughs> so today is not going to be as much of a disaster as last week, I hope. Um, I slept well. Today I want to talk about the past simple and the past continuous. Past simple, past continuous, and past simple versus past continuous. So as I said last week, we try to uh, alternate the um, tenses and other things. So we have adjectives and adverbs with the present simple, present continuous, and now we have the past simple, the past continuous. Here are um, five sentences. I'd like you to look at these sentences and something is wrong with each of them. I'll give you... Um, Two minutes to look at these sentences and uh, decide together what is wrong here, what's the mistake that's made. Um, let's look at the answers. Right. Um, is there anyone who can tell me what's wrong with the first sentence? Yes? It should be, I quarreled. Can you explain why? Um, the answer is, it should be, I quarreled, and not, I have quarreled. Can you explain why? Because it has a time in it, last night. It's an indication of time. Very good. I quarreled with my friend last night. If we, I'm going to explain this in more detail. This is just an introduction. If we um, have an indication of time in the past, we cannot say a specific moment in time. We cannot say, I have. I have a quarrel. It's got to be, I quarreled last night. I'll explain to you later on why. Um, second sentence, what is wrong? Anyone? Yep? Did you go away without her? Can you explain why? Yeah, because this is already there and it's a question, so we have to use the uh, backward. Yeah, the, uh, the infinitive. Yeah, infinitive. Yeah. So, um, here, this is the same as, as with the S. The tense is always on the finite on the finite verb. The finite verb always bears tense. That's what you learn in syntax, right? The finite verb is always the first verb, so that's here, that's to do. That's the only verb that can have a tense, did. So go is non-finite because it's not the first verb, and so it cannot be past tense. So we can't say, did you, went. Even, um, um, however, I still hear a lot of students say, I didn't knew that. Or, um, um, I couldn't went or something. Um, it's, it's very easy to slip into this somehow, so pay attention to that. You can't say, did you went away? Did you go? Okay, I'll do the next three sentences, because they're along the same lines. She has failed her exams a week ago. This should be, she failed her exams a week ago. A week ago is the specific indication of time, and we can't uh, use uh, have them. We should say, she failed. Next. Did she notice, again here, this should be, did she notice? Because we have a finite verb, beginning of the sentence, um, all the others are non-finite. Um, when, when has she heard her exam results? When? It's a specific indication of time. So this should be, when did she hear? Okay, this is just an introduction. I'll answer any questions later on. The past simple. Let's talk about the past simple. That's the one we're looking at now. Um, of course, you're familiar with this. What is, this is just a, a reminder. What does the past simple look like? Or the simple past? Um, you can either say simple past or past simple. It doesn't matter. Um, verb is ed is the normal past tense. Uh, however, of course, um, many verbs are irregular, and you need to know the irregular. Four. So the test will be tested on your irregular knowledge of irregular verbs as well. 
It's important to know them. Uh, also because you make a very, very bad impression if you mistake, uh, if you make mistakes with irregular verbs. So for example, to beat, beat, beat. The past simple then uses the second column. Second column. If you have trouble remembering irregular verbs, then uh, perhaps the video clip I showed you last week might be helpful, or two weeks ago, was it? The rap. Um, also pay attention to some spelling rules which apply to the past tense. I'm not going to go into them, you should know them. Um, but if you want to know, if you're a, want a reminder, look at the back of your book, page 350. And you can do that in your own time. That's a form of the past simple. Sorry, you weren't finished. Uh, Page 350. Okay. When do we use the past simple? Um, here are some examples of sentences with the verb in the past simple. I'd like you to, again, to look at these sentences and think of the rule for this. The rule for this. So, um, four sentences, I'll give you, for this, three minutes to come up with the rules. Don't use a book, try and think of this yourself. Um, what are the rules for these uses of the past simple? I'm going to discuss the answers. So if I can have your attention again, please. And uh, let's look at this together. Okay, um, what is the main thing with the past simple? Um, the past tenses are usually found quite difficult. The past simple and the past continuous are doable, and then uh, the further we get, the more complicated it gets, especially when we've talked about all the tenses, then to see the difference, to know the difference. Um, that's why um, I try to uh, um, produce these timelines, um, which are always a helpful thing to do in grammar. Um, I'll try to keep doing that so, um, uh, so it makes it uh, visible to you. The main thing with the past simple is um, a uh, specific moment in the past. Specific moment in the past. One single moment in the past that's now finished. That's why Usually, the past simple, uh, we use the past simple with an indication of time, like last week, or uh, when I was little, or two years ago. That's a specific moment in time that's now finished. So you can see the cross at like one point in time. That's the past simple. Yeah? As opposed to the past continuous, for example, which I'll talk about later on today, um, which is a longer period of time in the past. That's what you emphasize. So here, you want to say this is one specific moment in the past. That's the most important thing. Now, I'm going to discuss four rules, but they more or less come down to the same thing. They more or less come down to this idea that it's one particular moment in the past. So when I was a child, I visited my grandparents every summer. Here, you already see the indication of time. When I was a child, Right? So that shows you this should be the past simple because it's finished. It's a specific moment in time that's now finished. The rule here is, this is, a, this is repeated actions in the past. So even though you could also say specific moment in time, um, um, you should also learn that the past simple is used for repeated actions in the past. So if you look at the sentence, when I was a child, I visited my grandparents every summer. You could say, this is not a specific moment in time, this is something which is repeated again and again in the past. And that's true, but it's still finished. It was finished here when the cross is. Um, that's why we use the past simple. So the past simple is used for something, um, we can use the past simple for um, actions which are repeated, like habits. Um, we visited our grandparents every summer. This was a habit in the past. Yeah? So repeated actions in the past. You can compare this to the present simple. 
which you might have noticed sound very similar to the past simple, right? For the present simple, we said repeated actions in the present, or, or habits, something, uh, something which is repeated. I visit my grandparents every summer. So the present simple and the past simple are quite similar. Only the present simple is the now in the present, the past simple is finished in the past. Yeah? So for repeated actions in the past, we use the past simple. Um, and at the back of this is the idea of something which is finished in the past. That's where we use the past simple. Questions so far? No? Okay. So, repeated actions in the past. I lived near Liverpool for a couple of years. Again here, you can see an indication of time. Yeah, so this is also finished for a couple of years, an indication of time. However, this is also a situation or a state. So, past situations or past states. And you remember, for the present simple, we also said this is used for states, right? So this, the example is, I lived near Liverpool for a couple of years. In the present simple, we would say, I live near Liverpool. This is the present state. You live somewhere. That's a, a situation or a state. It's exactly the same in the past. It's a past situation. <laughs> So again, there's two reasons why you use the past simple here. One, this is a situation in the past or a state in the past, but also it's finished for a couple of years, no longer the case. Yeah? There's a specific indication of time. Um, number three is slightly different, because here there's no indication of time. We did our homework watched a movie and ate some popcorn. So you could say this is a rule which is slightly different from the rest because it's, it's, it's not related to the idea of indication of time in the past. Here, um, several things happen after each other. And what we, that's what we call a series of past actions or a sequence of events. A series of past actions, things that happen after each other. Then for all of these actions, sorry, I'm standing for all of these actions, you need to use the past simple. A series of past actions. So if you look at this example sentence, we did our homework, then watched a movie, and then ate some popcorn. Yeah? So here, you cannot say, we were, watching, we, we were doing our homework, watched a movie, and ate some popcorn. That doesn't mean. That's not possible because you want to say that these, this is a series of events. These things follow each other. Yeah, that's when you need to use the past simple. So a series of past events. Past actions. And then again, I went to the cinema yesterday. Here we have yesterday as an indication of past time. It's clear again, we need to use the past simple. There's another rule which says finished actions in the past. Well, basically, that's what I said. That's the basic rule for the past simple. Finished actions in the past. Um, do you have to distinguish all, all of these on the test? Because they're all kind of the same. On the test, we'll make sure um, if we want you to say repeated actions in the past, then we'll make sure it's phrases, the, the example sentence will be uh, phrased in such a way that it's clear that you need to say repeated actions in the past and not just say finished. Yeah? If both are possible, then we'll mark both correct. Yeah? But it might, it's, what I try to emphasize is um, uh, that uh, these are not four random rules, the past simple. At the back of this is one basic idea if something is finished in the past with an indication of time, then you need to use the past simple. And there's different nuances. So, um, the first one, this is something which is repeated. A repeated action, this is not really a state or something. Second one, this is, this is a state or a situation. Third one, this is repeated actions. Um, the last one, um, this is something which is finished. finished. So here, for, the, for this one, don't make the mistake to say, 
I have gone to the cinema yesterday. That's what quite a few people do. I notice that quite a lot in uh, writing and speaking from students, people say, I have been to the cinema yesterday. No. You can't use have, that's a present perfect, which we'll talk about in a few weeks' time. You can't use the form of have with the past tense, uh, with an indication of past time, like yesterday. Any questions? Okay, so when you remember this, when you write this down in your notes, you might just, just it might be helpful for you to write down the timeline, and then next to this, write down the different rules. So you know there's one sort of basic idea when it comes to the past simple, and then there's four rules which are sort of, you could say, maybe not sub rules, but um, which show the different nuances for the past simple. Yeah? If there are no questions, I'll move on. So learn these four rules by heart, and remember, the basic idea is a specific point in time in the past. Next. Ah, so uh, I put this uh, on the PowerPoint for emphasis. So specific indication of past time, usually past simple. So if there's if there's a word like yesterday, last week, when I was little, during the war, etc., then use a passive. If you're going to use an expression like that, then I'm going to say 99% of cases, because you're never 100% sure, but you use the passive. Yeah, so when there's a specific indication of time. Okay, I'm going to move on. Don't copy everything else on the PowerPoint, just uh, use abbreviations and uh, right, that's the main idea. Sorry? So this is somewhere in the past. Okay. Yeah, somewhere in the past. That's the past simple. Okay. Yeah, specific moment in the past. There's an oh. X in the past. Yeah. Okay. Yes. This is usually past simple, so there are exceptions. As I said, you can never be one hundred percent sure. Um, well, um, you've got to be careful with rules like this because then. If you just if you stick to rules of thumb, you're going to make mistakes. You need to keep thinking as well. So, for example, the past perfect, I had work. For example, you could say yesterday, I had uh, or I had had breakfast before I went home or before I went to work. Now, I had had breakfast when I went to work. Um, so then you do use uh, the past perfect as well with yesterday. Um, so that's a uh, it's not an exception, but you just have to be careful. So I'm going to explain that in another lecture, yeah? But as a general rule, remember, when you use the a specific indication of time, somewhere in the sentence you probably need to use a past simple. Yeah? Okay, here's an exercise. I'd like you to think of your own example for each function of the past simple. So I've given you these four functions. A finished single action in the past, Repeated actions in the past, a series of past actions and past situations. For each of these four functions, can you give your own example? And I'll give you five minutes to do this. Five minutes to give an example sentence for each of these four, four rules. Um, any volunteers for the first one? A finished single action in the past, or past actions, yes, Yuri. Uh, I created a painting yesterday. I created a painting yesterday, is that true? Maybe. Maybe it is. Ah. <laughs> That's correct. I created a painting yesterday. Yesterday is a single moment in the past. Um, create is an action in the past. 
So here we say, created a painting yesterday. We can't, you can't say, I have created a painting yesterday. Or you can say, I have created a painting, not with yesterday. I created a painting yesterday. Very good. Um, any questions about the first rule? Okay, the second one. Can I have a, a Darcy? Yeah. During the war, we constantly walk through the trenches. During the war, we? We constantly walk through the trenches. Trenches. During the war, we constantly walk through the trenches. Very good. Um, during the war is in the past. Uh, this is finished. And this is a repeated action. We constantly walked. Yeah. So here... Um, it's finished and it's also repeated. Okay. Yes. Well, does a sentence like um, we used to include the. Uh... Used to have. It's, it's slightly different. Uh, we don't really call that the past simple, though some people would. Um, uh, we just call it used to. Um, but it's got a slightly different rule. We'll talk about used to in a different lesson. I wrote used to. But... Yeah, okay, yeah. Uh, used to, strictly not the past simple. So, um, so leave out used to, yeah, yeah, but you can use used to, um, but then we'll, we'll talk about that in another lecture, yeah? That's not past perfect, used to, no. A series of past, a series of past actions, uh, yes, you've got an example sentence, even though you came in after the, the uh, explanation. Go ahead. Uh, he overslept, so he got late to school, and then he had to explain why he was late. <laughs> <laughs> yes, excellent. He overslept, came late to school, and explained why he was late. Yes. So he has a, a series of consecutive events, events that follow each other. Yeah, a series of events. So they all have to date in the past simple. Someone else with an example for a, a series of past events? No one? This one's good. He overslept, came late for school, and, and, and came up with an explanation. All of the past texts. So here there's no indication of past time. There's no yesterday or this morning. But because this is a series of events in the past, we still need to use the past simple. Yeah? The fourth one, past situations. Any volunteers who'd like to share their example sentence? I went to school with the bus for a few months. I went to school with the bus for a few months. Yeah, because you say for a few months, this is a I could, you, I could, you could argue this is a situation. Your to go is an action really, isn't it? But um, I went to school by bus for a few months. Yeah, I would accept that. Yeah? The class of last week was very fun. <laughs> last, week's, yeah, last week's class was very, I would say very funny, or was great fun. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, uh, was it? <laughs> <laughs> I actually didn't think of this class. I oh. just uh, came up with something. How disappointing. <laughs> we cut it out from the no, no. video. It could be worse though. For those of you who weren't here last week, I had a really bad night, so I did everything wrong. And um, so I got really confused. I didn't do everything wrong. But it could be worse. Um, once I was teaching phonetics, phonetics 2, and I'm really good at phonetics, so that should, shouldn't be a problem to me. But this was about intonation, and I was talking and talking and talking about intonation, and I could see the eyes of the students gazing at me, and it didn't work, and then in the end I got confused, and I thought, I was thinking, right, I did it all wrong. So I just sent the students home, halfway through the class, and I said, I'll do it again next week. And I just said, oh. I confuse you so much. So it could be worse than last week. Yeah, they all forgave me, so that's okay. <laughs> uh, so past situations, last week's class was great fun. Can you give one example? Sorry? Can you give one example? Well, past situations. Uh, his example. Or, uh, I lived, I lived in, uh, I lived in uh, Rotterdam when I was young. Younger? Okay. Yeah? <coughs> Or, um, I, I felt ill last week. Yeah? Okay. Any questions? Okay, um, it's time to move on to the next 
part, it's also 10 past 11, so we'll have a 10 minute break. Thank you. Thank you. Right, okay. So people uh, can finish their talking and other things. And we'll move on to the next tense. So we've talked about the past simple. The past simple is a finished single action in the past. It's a main idea. And then um, we'll talk about the past continuous. I didn't put it, I didn't add in an extra slide of the form of the past continuous because that's quite obvious. It's always the form of be at an in form, right? I am walking, he is uh, creating, she was uh, crying, etc. Um, I don't think I need to tell you that you can't say I, dri <coughs> I driving. Yeah? Um, of course you can't. I am driving, or I was driving. So, here are again um, five examples of the past continuous. So, this time of four, but five examples. I'd like you to think of the rule for each of these. I'll give you again five minutes to think about this. Think of the rule for each um, example of the past continuous. Here. Let's go through the examples and look at the rules. Again, um, as with the past simple, for the present for the past continuous, there's one main idea, and it also might also help you to link this to the present continuous. The present simple is similar to the past simple, one's present and the other one's past, but the rules are more or less the same. Uh, the present continuous is also more or less the same as the past continuous, <coughs> only the one's present, the other one's past. So it might help you to compare these two. Again here, we're not dealing with a single action in the past, or a, a, a series of single actions in the past. Here, we're dealing with a continuous action in the past. So again, this is also something which is finished, of course, with the past simple, but the focus is on the action itself, how long it took, um, um, how difficult it was, or um, how, how short it was, etc. So with the um, continuous, you've also always got to realize of course, this is also a finished action, but the focus is on something else. What you want to emphasize, what you want to focus is on is um, that this took a particular period of time. In Dutch you would say, ik was aan het. Ik was aan het wassen. Ik was aan het wassen, that sounds nice. <laughs> I don't know why I say that. Ik was aan het, ik was aan het wassen. Um, you were doing this. You're, what you're trying to emphasize is not this was finished. What you want to emphasize <coughs> is I was busy doing this. <coughs> so, the past continuous emphasizes that this action took a particular period of time or um, was continuing, was ongoing, um, etc. So, the first one I wasn't driving so fast that day. Oh, sorry. I was studying to become a teacher, but unfortunately I dropped out. Here, I was studying means I was busy doing this. Uh, that's what it basically means, but um, here's an extra rule. Um, this is a plan that did not happen. So. Um, I should rephrase this really, otherwise I would confuse you. The basic rule for the past continuous is something which continued over a particular period of time in the past. So, something which was ongoing in the past. However, you could say the first one, maybe I should have moved it a bit, so it wouldn't be the first one. But the first one is kind of an exception. It's not, it's not good to start with an exception, I'm sorry. But the first one is kind of an exception. Um, of course here, you're not busy doing something. This is also something which is over and done. 
Um, what, you, what you're saying here, this is a plan uh, that did not happen. I wanted to become a teacher. I was studying to become a teacher, but I dropped out. So, um, this is kind of uh, an extra rule, as, you, as you, um, you could say, kind of an exception. This is a plan that did not happen. I was studying to become a teacher, but then I dropped out. So I want to, here, I was studying doesn't really mean I was really busy doing this, but I wanted. I was studying because I wanted to become a teacher, but it didn't happen. Yeah, so a plan that did not happen. I was living in England at the time of the mad cow disease. Again here, this one, um, applies to the rule at the top, the timeline. I was living um, in England at the time of the mad cow disease. This is something where you want to focus on how long the action took, or how long the situation took, how long it was, or how short. Uh, because this is a temporary situation in the past. A temporary situation in the past. And again, because you say, I was living here, you're emphasizing this was, this was only temporary. This wasn't long or something. This was only temporary. This is not a past state. But the past simple, we could use that for past states. I lived in the UK during the time of the mad cow disease. But here, this is not a state. This is a temporary situation. You want to emphasize that. Um, and that's something you should remember for all the other tenses I'm going to talk about. Whenever something is continuous, either present continuous, past continuous, present perfect continuous, past perfect continuous, future continuous, or future perfect continuous. <laughs> um, there's either an emphasis on there's either an emphasis on this is this this uh, uh, um, uh, this was ongoing at the moment I was busy doing this or someone else was busy doing this or this was temporary very often something which is continuous is so because it's only temporary like here I was living in England at the time of the mad cow disease so when you use a continuous tense. It always sounds temporary. Yeah? So remember that whenever we're talking about the continuous in whatever tense, it's either the focus, the, the emphasis is either on this is an ongoing situation, I was busy doing this, um, or it's because this is temporary. It's only, um, it's not permanent, it's temporary. Thank you. It was raining when I drove home. Again here, you can see this applies to, this fits uh, the timeline here. It was raining when I drove home. This was happening, this was ongoing. This was not a single moment, because rain is usually not a single moment, unless when you were inside this morning. It rained literally for, for 10 seconds and it was uh, over again. Uh, but usually, rain is something which is ongoing, right? It was raining. So here, again, we're talking about something which is ongoing, also temporary, of course, hopefully. Um, but, in this case, uh, we, we, we use this continuous tense, this ongoing tense, to say this is background information, as it were, or a scene in the past. Um, I shall, I'll, I'll explain this one. You use this one um, when you're t telling a story about the past. And you're providing the background information to the story. Um, it was getting dark um, when he went home. Or it was raining when we went to the uh, blah blah blah. Um, so you're providing the background picture to the story. What was happening at the time of the story? You have a question. Um, so it has to be um, something that will happen again in this situation, because 
the other one says, I was even in Egypt at the time of the medical disease. So, if I want to give an example of a scene, it has to, has to be something that is going to happen again. That might happen again. Yeah. But that's the case for all of them. <laughs> they could all happen again in the future, of course. I, can, they can, I might be living in, in, in the UK again in the future. Just yet. Good morning. Yeah, no, I overslept. Sorry. Okay. I hope I hope you are sorry. I hope you are sorry. Yeah. I haven't seen any cheers yet. Um, and I can say, so there might be a time I live in the UK again, and there might be another man, man cow disease. But here, this is just something. Uh, this is just a background picture, right? What was happening when when something else happened? Um, so, um, how, can I give another example? Um, the, the, school, the school building was getting empty when we left outside, uh, when we went outside. Yeah? So something is happening in the background and then you tell your story. That's a scene in the past. And then the background information of the scene is always in the continuous tense. Yeah? School building was getting empty. Yeah, another question here. Uh, I actually had a question about the previous one. I was yeah. living in England at the time of the mad cow disease. Can we? Uh, someone else? Someone is asking a question here. But lots of people are whispering, quietly talking. Um, but Very can you not say yeah. I lived in England at the time of the mad cow disease because you know the last part is a specific indication. Yes, it depends. If this is a state, um, then that's that's true. But you want to say this is temporary. I was only living there temporarily for a specific moment of time. So, for example, I lived in the, I myself I lived in the, in Newcastle for a year. Um, um, so I so when I lived in when I was when I was living there. So when I was living there, um, someone would ask me, where are you from? And I would say, I'm living in the UK. And I can now say, I was living in the UK. Um, but I live in the Netherlands, because that's where I permanently live, really. I was only living temporarily in the UK. So if this is something which is finished in the past, that's true. But what you want to emphasize, and that's the point of the continuous, is, of course, it's also... <coughs> Ladies, of course it's also finished, but what you want to emphasize, this is really only temporary. So you can say, I lived in the UK. But how do you know if it's temporary? That's up to you. So if you want to emphasize, this is only temporary, then you say, I was living in the UK. Yeah? So on the test, again, that's because, because people want to know. On the test, we always give you examples in which it's certain what we want to hear. And otherwise, we'll mark both options correct. Yeah. So this is a good question. Question actually, you've got to remember for the continuous. Of course, you can say I lived in the UK. Of course, but then you're not emphasising this was only temporary. You're saying this is. You're emphasising this was uh, the state. It's it's what you want to put the focus on. Do you want to get your listeners? Do you want to give your listeners the idea this was only really temporary? Yeah. I was only living there for a year. That's one example where you'd use it. I was only living there for a year. Yeah? So it was only very short. Okay. Next one is an important one. Because this one occurs very often. And is also done wrong by people. I was watching TV when the, when the phone rang. This is an interrupted action in the past. One action interrupted by another action. This one is a combination of the past continuous and the past simple. I was watching TV when the phone rang. The action that's being interrupted. I've got a timeline here. The action that's being interrupted is in the continuous. That's the, uh, this one. Uh, that's in the continuous, and then the cross, that's the action that interrupts, 
That's a past simple. So I can say I was um, explaining the past continuous when Lucien came in. I like to give people bad feeling when they come late. So. <laughs> um, so, um, um, so the action that's ongoing is in the continuous, and then one single action interrupts that action, and that's in the past simple. Yeah, I was watching TV. That that was ongoing. That was uh, that's what I was doing, and then something else happened in between. Um, so, so one famous example I think is what were you doing at 9-11? Something like that, uh, or, uh, or, or, or a similar, similar expression. Because lots of people re remember what they were doing when the um, two planes hit the uh, Twin Towers. I can still remember what I was doing. I was doing something and then this happened. Yeah? I was being a baby. So the action that's ongoing is so continuous, and then something else interrupts that action, and uh, that's in the simple. What, what were you saying? What did you say? She was being a baby. She was being a baby. Okay, is it that long ago, 9-11? No. I was in Washington. I'm getting out of being old now. Okay, so this one is, a, this is an important one. So they're all important to remember, but this one especially, um, because that occurs quite often. And then, the final one, I wasn't driving so fast that day. I wasn't driving so fast that day. It's action at, at, sorry, this is a mistake, at or around. So... Actions at or around the time in the past. Um, so that's what explains this. This here. So the uh, uh, the dotted line. Um, something which is happening around a particular time. I wasn't driving so fast that day. And again, you emphasise. You emphasize that um, this is something which is ongoing, which is taking place, <coughs> which is happening around that time. And in Dutch, you would you would use the um, tense "ik was aan het rijden." Was aan het wassen. Questions? Yes, you had a question. Yeah, I think. What was the uh, example sentence for a scene in the past again? It was raining when I drove home. <laughs> Isn't that one very similar to the one on top? Yeah. So sometimes, uh, that's, that's the case with, with the tenses, the, the functions, they overlap. Quite often they overlap. So sometimes, or uh, maybe I should say quite often, it's not clear which one it is. It might be one of two. So then it's up to you to decide which one. And if it's on the test, for example? Then we mark both correct. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, that's the that's the thing with language or grammar. That's not grammar is not mathematics. So it's never one and one is two. There's always uh, things that, that there's always a grey area where you're never really sure which one it is. And then it could just be both. Yeah. So if you can, if 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 something, if you get a sentence and the rule could either be. This is uh, a scene in the past, or this is an action around a time in the past, then both are correct. And we don't choose one, both are correct. Yeah? <coughs> Any other questions? So, the main difference between the past simple and the past continuous... Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Machines are taking over the world. Um, the past simple is about a single action in the past. The past continuous is uh, not so much emphasizes that this was a single action or a completed action. It emphasizes the action itself, how long it took, 
how hard it was, and it was only temporary, that it was ongoing, etc. Yeah? So, the main difference between the past simple and the past continuous is this. In the past simple, an action is finished. We talked about grammar during breakfast. In the past continuous, the action, of course, when I'm talking about it now, the action is also finished, right? That's a tricky one with the past continuous. But, at the time of the action, the action was unfinished. And that's the main idea. You might need some time to, get, to let this sink in. The action, of course, is finished now. We were talking about grammar during breakfast. Now, it's not breakfast time now, so it's finished. But, during breakfast, it wasn't finished yet. Yeah. So basically, on the second one, you expect it to be followed up with a reason why it stopped. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Or you say, we were talking, um, we were talking about grammar, and then he said... Yeah. So you're giving the background information that something else happened. Or an interrupted action. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so maybe this is too complicated if I say this, so then stop listening if it's too complicated. But for me, it always feels like when I use the past simple, you're looking back at a single action, at a completed action in the past. When I use the past continuous, we were talking, it feels like I'm creeping back into that moment where I was talking, and then what happened? Yeah? So I see the action as unfinished, as it were. I hope this makes sense. Yeah? That's kind of what I meant. Yeah, okay, yeah. Um, so again here, it might help you to write down the timeline. Even though you think this is easy now, it helps you to have all the timelines as you, uh, when you get all the tenses. Yeah, because there's a lot of them, and it's going to be, some of them are very complicated. So then it helps to have the timelines. It also helps to understand the main idea between simple and continuous, because that's something that keeps coming back. And if you understand that, the difference between simple and continuous, then it's not so much a problem anymore with whether something is future or past or present, because then the basic idea is always the same. Simple is about single actions or states, repeated actions and the continuous is always about the action itself how long it took um, uh, what um, yeah how, how hard it was that it was only temporary etc you were busy doing this you're emphasizing the action okay any questions and here I have two sentences uh, these, these are about the difference between the past simple and the continuous, past continuous. I'd like you to spend uh, uh, two minutes discussing the difference between the sentences and the question of which sentence describes the picture. Two minutes. Talk about this. Um, um, what's the difference between these sentences? I'll give you the answer. Ladies and gentlemen. The first one, we talked about this. This is one action which is interrupted by another. He's taking a selfie, and while he's doing that, he's being attacked. They attack him. Right? This is one action interrupted by another action. That's the past continuous together with the past simple. We said that's an action interrupted by another action. Yeah? The second one is two past simples, which means this is a series. If there's more than one past simple together in a sentence, this is a series of past actions. First is attacked. And then he takes a selfie. Um, yeah, so this is... Um, you might not see this here, um, but that's really what it means. So if you're saying the cat took a selfie when the dogs attacked him, what this means is... Okay. 
what this means is he's attacked and then next he takes the self. Yeah, this is a series of past actions. Um, you could also say the dogs attacked him and the cat took a self. That's exactly the same. So which sentence describes the picture? First one. First one. First one. Do you get it now, Hans? Kind of. Okay. Uh, so I was talking to Hez about the attack. Uh, he, he isn't attacked yet, but I, I think attack also means uh, uh, when you're on your way to attack someone. Because if, um, say, Germany attacks the Netherlands, they maybe haven't started bombing yet, but they're on their way with the planes, then that, I would still call that an attack. But anyway, so um, um, you could argue about that. So the difference between the past simple and the past continuous um, can be quite subtle. And you've got to be careful here. This is a mistake people make sometimes. If you want to emphasize, this is a series of action, they use two past simples. If you want to emphasize, if you want to say, this, the one action is interrupted by another action, then you can't use two past simples. You can't say the cat took a cell from the dogs and attacked him. That does not mean that uh, one in action interrupted another action. Uh, I saw a finger in the back. You figured it out. Yes? So when there's two past simples, yeah. it's always one first, then the other. Yeah. It's never the same. Okay, then, no. then it's clear. No. However, if you want to say two things happen at the same time, I didn't include that in the PowerPoint, but that's maybe helpful to remember. If you want to say two things happen at the same time, like the taking a selfie and the attack happened at the same time, then you say the cat was taking a selfie and the dogs were attacking him. Yeah? Then when you say, when you use two past continuous, continuouses, then uh, the two actions happen at the same time. When you use two past simples, the, action happen, the actions happen after each other. When you use the past simple and the past continuous, one action interrupts the other, another action. Yeah? So remember that. This is, this is helpful to remember. I didn't put this on the PowerPoint, but I, I realize it now. This is helpful to remember. Two past simples means one action follows another action. Two past continuouses means these two ha happen at the same time. So the cat took a selfie when the dogs attacked him, means one action after another. The cat was taking a selfie when the dogs were attacking him, means two actions at the same time. A past continuous and a past simple mean this is an interrupted action. He was taking a selfie when the dogs attacked him. So two past simples is one action follows the other? Yeah. And? Two past simples is one action followed by another action. Two past continuouses. So abbreviate past continuous with uh, PAC. That helps. Um, two past continuouses means two actions at the same time. And past simple and past continuous together means one action interrupts another action. One, one action interrupts another action. So, I'll, okay. Um, I'll put these. Um, I'll put this in one. Let me see. I'll make a new slide to help you. So here. So here are the three varieties. The, yeah? So you see, there's three possibilities. Was taking, attacked, took, attacked, was taking, were attacking. Yeah? Okay. Um, some people are getting bored, I see, so I'll move on. So here, one more thing, ladies and gentlemen, we're almost done. One more thing, I didn't mention this. So if you put this in a timeline, this is the top one. 
this is the attack, and this is taking a selfie. Yeah, so here he starts picking up his phone, and then he takes a selfie, he starts, starts taking a selfie, smile, and then bang, he's attacked. Yeah, and then taking the selfie, maybe, well, this, in this case it's interrupted, maybe uh, this one's, uh, now, he's running. He's, now he's dead, so. Um, here, this is the second one, this is, take, this is the attack, and this is the selfie. Yeah? Bum, bum. Two actions. Okay, the final exercise. Shall we do this? Yes. Um, three minutes. I think the first one you mean I have traveled or traveled. You're quite right. That was a mistake in here, and I corrected it. Was traveling or had traveled? Yeah, my artist of present continues. No, this one was have traveled or traveled. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Like the first exercise. So. The first one is I traveled a lot when I was younger, and the explanation is this is a finished action in the past. Yeah? Yes, my. Okay. The explanation is a finished action in the past. That's why we say traveled rather than have traveled. We um, have worked or worked in Venice from 20, 2006 to 2008. Well, we haven't talked about have worked, so obviously it's going to be worked, but what's the explanation? Well, the explanation is this is a past situation. Also finished, eh? When I was younger is an indication of time. Finished. 2006 to 2008. Finished. Past situation. We visited a lot of museums while we were staying. We're staying. Yes. yes. Actions at, at or around. Again here the, the uh, slash is missing. At or around a time in the past. So we were staying in Beijing. We visited a lot of museums while we were staying in Beijing. They had dinner, or they were having dinner, when the police knocked on the door. It was, they were having dinner. This is an interrupted action. And this one is something which I didn't mention, but this is also a rule to remember. It's also in your book. Fiona was working at Harrods when or while she met her husband. When? We do not use while for a completed action. While is only used for the continuous. While she was meeting. Tell about yeah? Because you, when you use a continuous, you're focusing on the action itself. And that's what while does as well. So you can't use while with the past simple, I'll move a bit. Fiona was working in Harrods when she met her husband. Having said that, yes? What if, what if the sentence was turned around? She met her husband while she was working in Harrods. Yeah. Then it is Yeah. Yeah. Um, we use when, not while, because while is only used with the continuous. Before you start packing and walking, I'll move back to this slide, yeah? I'll just show the um, homework. Here's the homework, and then I'll move back to the last slide.